Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about another type of hypothesis test, which is ANOVA. ANOVA or ANOVA stands for Analysis of Variance. In the previous video, we went through the t-test for one sample and the t-test for two samples. But if you want to compare a variable across three or more samples, then the t-test doesn't work anymore. And in that case, we need to use ANOVA. Again, ANOVA is only applicable to scale data. And more strictly speaking, it should be scale data that are normally distributed. If you remember from the previous video, in our independent samples t-test, we tested if the population mean of problem solving is the same between male and female students. So male and female students are two independent groups. But here let's consider another situation. Instead of comparing between the two genders, we want to compare across the different student grades. And in my data, the students can be from grade 4, grade 5, or grade 6, so there are three groups. And the t-test doesn't work, because the t-test involves at most two groups. And we also need to rewrite our null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis in this case. For ANOVA, the null hypothesis is that the population mean is the same across all the groups. And the alternative hypothesis is that the population mean is not the same across all the groups. Now, this doesn't mean that the population mean is different between any two of these groups. What we mean is that at least one of the groups has a different population mean than another group. So let's do it in SPSS. Now we click on Analyze, go to Compare Means, and choose the last item, One Way ANOVA. Now one way here means that we only use one way of grouping, which is grade in this case. In statistics terms, we say that we have one independent variable. But if you want to compare across the different grades and the different genders at the same time, then in that case, we have two independent variables and we need two-way ANOVA. But since this course is for beginning researchers, I will avoid those complications and only stick to one-way ANOVA. So let's click on one-way ANOVA. Again, we put the problem solving into the box on the right and this time, this is called the dependent list. And the grouping variable, which is gray in this case, should be put into the factor list. Now, if you remember, in the independent samples t-test, we are required to specify the two numbers that represent the two groups to be used in the t-test. But now in the ANOVA, since we can have more than two groups, SPSS does not ask for the two group labels. Instead, it will use any labels that it finds in the grade variable. So I have 4, 5, or 6 in the grade variable. So SPSS will know that I want to compare across these three groups. Now we click OK. So here is the result. Now the working principles of ANOVA is quite different from that of the t-test. And in this table, instead of the t-value, you see the f-value. But as far as the result is concerned, the only thing that you need to read is in the last column. Again, this one represents the p-value. And the decision rule is the same as before. If the p-value is smaller than 0 0.05 or any other level of significance that you might want to use, then you reject the null hypothesis. So in this case here, the p-value is 0 0.003, which is smaller than 0 0.05. And the conclusion is to reject the null hypothesis. Or in other words, we conclude that the students from the three grades perform differently in problem solving. At least one of the groups has a different population mean score of problem solving than the other groups. But you may want to ask a further question. Which group is different from the others? The ANOVA table doesn't give you any clue. But fortunately, there is a way to ask SPSS to give you more information. Now let's click on the Recall Recency Use dialog. Click One Way and Over. Now instead of clicking OK right away, we also click on the other button named Post Halt. Post Halt means you do some further tests after the ANOVA. So click on it and you see a number of options. Now these options are the names of the Post Halt tests. 
And this post hoc test will tell you which group is different from the other groups. A popular choice of post hoc test is the LSD. So let's use LSD in this example and then click continue. Click OK. Now this time, in addition to the original ANOVA table, we also get the post hoc test table. And here it says multiple comparisons. Now be very careful. The post hoc test is meaningful only if the null hypothesis of the ANOVA is rejected. If the null hypothesis is not rejected, then it means all the groups have the same population mean, and there is no point in conducting any further post hoc test. But anyway, let's look at the results here. What the post hoc test does is to do some peer comparison. So in the first row here, we have grade 4 and then grade 5. So it means that it's trying to compare grade 4 with grade 5. And again, what we need to see is the SIG, which is again the p-value. So if the p-value is smaller than 0 0.05, then we reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that the two groups have the same population mean. And the alternative hypothesis is that the two groups have different population means. These hypotheses are the same as the ones you use in independent samples t-test. So in my case here, for the grades 4 and 5, the p-value is 0 0.04, which is smaller than 0 0.05. So the conclusion is that we reject the null hypothesis for the pair comparison between grade 4 and grade 5. Or in other words, grade 4 and grade 5 students have different mean scores in problem solving. That's our conclusion. Now, how about grade 4 and grade 6? For grade 4 and grade 6, the p-value is even smaller. So the conclusion is that grade 4 students and grade 6 students perform differently in problem solving. But grade 5 versus grade 4 is the same as grade 4 versus grade 5. And in fact, the p-value is the same. So we can skip this one. And then we have on the fourth row, grade 5 versus grade 6. And this time, the p-value is not smaller than 0 0.05. So in this case, we say that we do not reject the null hypothesis. Or in other words, we have no evidence to say that the grade 5 and grade 6 students perform differently in problem solving. And finally, in the last two rows, we have grade 6 versus grade 4 and grade 6 versus grade 5, both of which have been considered before. So we can skip these two. So our final conclusion is that, first of all, the ANOVA suggests that we should reject the null hypothesis. Or in other words, the mean score of problem solving is not the same across all the three grades. But which grade is different from the others? From the post hoc test, we see that grade 4 is different from grade 5 and also different from grade 6. But grade 5 and grade 6 are the same. So grade 4 student is the group that is different from the others. So to report your results, First of all, you report the descriptive statistics of all the three groups of students. The ANOVA procedure doesn't give you this descriptive statistics information, so you need to generate the tables using the other procedures in descriptive statistics. And next, you need to report the ANOVA. First of all, you write down the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Then you report the F value. The F value of ANOVA is like the T value of the t-test. It is not easy to determine the conclusion from the F value, but some reviewers and editors prefer to have the F value as well in your result. And of course, you should report the P value. And then based on the P value, you write down if you want to reject the null hypothesis at a particular level of significance, which is usually 0 0.05. And if the null hypothesis is rejected, then you also need to report the post hoc test. First of all, state the name of the post hoc test that you have chosen, and then list the results of the three pair comparisons. And usually it suffices just to give the p-value for each pair comparison. And then finally, write down your conclusion to tell which group or which groups are different from the others. And then finally, write a few sentences to explain what this means in your particular research context. And in my case, I can say that the grade 4 students perform differently in problem solving than the grade 5 and grade 6 students, while the grade 5 and grade 6 students have the same performance. So that's all for ANOVA. And at this point, I hope you are beginning to see that. First, we pick our test depending on how many groups we have. 
For one group or two groups, we use the t-test. And for three or more groups, we use the ANOVA. And second, no matter what test we use, the procedures or the structure of the analysis is similar. We have to write down the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is about something equal to each other, and the alternative hypothesis is about something not equal to each other. And then in both cases, we look at the p-value, and if the p-value is smaller than 0 0.05, then we reject the null hypothesis, or otherwise we do not reject the null hypothesis. And no matter what results you get, you need to write a few sentences to interpret the meaning of your result in your particular research context. That's the end of the video. I hope you find it helpful. See you next time.